guess I'm ready to start. Jamly stream, that's right. So our first game on the list, and I don't know how to pronounce this exactly. Oh yeah? Dang, hold on. That's as loud as it goes. Oh, what a mess. I hope that suffices. I don't want to really be the main attraction of this anyway, though. But the first game on my list is Chirza. Okay. All right. I tried to choose games that, like, had minimal or no jump scares. There's a friend of mine who likes to watch these videos sometimes and she hates that sort of thing. pyramid in your local desert. <laughs> well, it doesn't have an eye on it. That's just, uh, they didn't want to infringe copyright. There is a jump button, by the way. Oops. That doesn't seem like that was supposed to happen. No jumping on the elevator. Maybe a not so friendly pyramid then? Maybe we don't maybe we don't like the pyramid so much.
Yeah, it, it is kind of Twilight Zone-y. There's a bunch of Twilight Zone episodes about isolation, too, that this kind of has a similar vibe to. Six of us went to bed one night. When we woke the next morning, we were five. A new monument, stark and titanic, made from the same black stone which composed the pyramid, had grown up from the desert floor. No one spoke at all that day. My mother's skin was crisp and red, and she no longer had the strength to walk. I brought her water and bread, and I could stand the pain in my eyes for long enough to see. Five of us went to bed that night. When we woke the next morning, we were four. a new structure in the desert, a new empty hollow, a new trail of footprints leading to the pyramid's great door. Those of us who remained would go to the pyramid, stare at the door for long hours, pushing our hands and shoulders against it, but it would not move. Some nights I dreamed of the sound of grinding stone, the shuffling of footsteps, and an unbearable light. But if ever I woke, I would see nothing. There is nothing to be afraid of. My mother would lie without prompting, or cloudy fluid wet from her eyes. She knew what there was to be afraid of. What she meant was that there was nothing we could do. I guess I wouldn't mind being turned into some kind of huge monument when I died. Like of all the ways to go, I think maybe being turned into some kind of giant spike adorned with floating staircases isn't the worst way. Like, oh, you're still conscious? Hmm. Yeah, that would be... On the one hand, you're mortal. On the other hand, you have no way to perceive your surroundings, and you're trapped in an eternal uh, state of being a weird, creepy tower. Okay, if I had to be alive, maybe that would be a little bit less swell. Oh, puzzle! Platforming! Man, I wonder what happens if I fall off. Is there like a death state? You can't fine it if you turn the person in charge of fines into like a big tower. which might be the pyramid's M.O. My mother and I woke on the penultimate morning to find that we were all remain. 
the hot sand was singing through the empty doors of our village. I asked her what the word oblation meant. Though she lacked strength, her head snapped toward me when she stared. Her eyes were yellow and roomy, but I could see her fear. She asked me where I had heard the word. In truth, I had not heard it at all. I had woken with it imprinted on the backs of my eyelids, written on the walls of my veins, a sudden clandestine addition, like the bite of a nocturnal insect. I knew that the pyramid had put it there, as a warning, perhaps an edict. I never answered her, so she never answered me. They were the last words I ever heard my mother speak. The next morning she was gone. Nothing left of her but a trail of dragging footprints in the sand, leading to the pyramid's closed door. And then there was one. I wonder if we are playing as this guy, or if we're someone who just came after, and he's already been turned into one of these, uh, fine structures. Oh man, Journey. I never got to play Journey. Because I didn't have a PlayStation at the time. Something to think about now that I have one, come to think of it. We're on a different kind of journey today. Different sorts of feels. Darker feels. Feels constructed of the same obsidian that rose from the sand as a singing pyramid. Feels that are towers that were your mom. The feels of becoming a tower yourself. These are the feels that I am concerned with. I spent what I knew was my final day walking to each of the black structures, pressing my hands and lips against their cold stone, wishing them goodbye. They gave off no warmth, and there was nothing in their angles to tell me who they had been. I could not tell which one was my mother. The pyramid's incessant singing had clouded my memory. I was nearly blind from the pain in my eyes. I told each one that I loved them. And then I returned to the village to wait. Oh boy. <laughs> Return to the village then? I don't know if I want to follow in this guy's footsteps. I think maybe this interesting archaeological trip that we are on might ought to end right now. Before anything horrible happens. Well, that remains to be seen or experienced.
but I think I kind of see another glowy at the village. So, jerk but there's only one way this can end I think pyramids by their nature are just sort of you know they're a sinister geometry a good cube a cube you can trust and a sphere has no sides so you definitely trust the sphere. But in between that is like a pyramid, which you... Uh... This is, a, <laughs> this is an incredibly distressing noise. <laughs> Alright, you freaking jerk. We're stuck at this screen. I think that was the ending. That, that built up a nice, good dread. That was a good start. Uh, release me. <laughs> there we go. Now I want to. I want to see what happens if we jump off, real quick. Yeah, no, that was a good. That was a good noise. Alright. Straight to the top of... That's the... Uh, that takes too long to climb. We'll just pop on right here. And see if we get a fun alternate ending for killing ourselves instead of becoming some kind of... Shitty... Obsidian Maul. The ending where we go Super Saiyan and choke slam the pyramid 
and then all the uh, structures turn back into people, and then we get a date for the prom. All right. And hop. Oh. Okay. Even death is not a release from the watchful shadow of the Obsidian Pyramid. All right, that's kind of what I expected might happen. Next on the list is do do do. Stories Untold. I think we'll only play the first half of it today, and then I'll save the rest for another time. I have mixed feelings about this game. I, I've played this one before, but uh, the presentation is so strong. But the ending is sort of iffy. Let's get on in there. Devolver Digital, they made a, they made a sort of game jam thing, entry, and then they expanded it into like a four-part little game. So how, how good can you guys read the screen? Or do you want me to read it to you? I know that annoys some people. And since this first part is a text adventure, it'd be pretty crummy if you couldn't read it. And I'm playing at a lower resolution because I only have the one monitor and I need to see the chat. So if you can't read it, Okay. You pull up to the driveway of the family holiday home and park the car. It's dark, but it's idyllic as you remember from all that time ago. You remember being told to look in the glove box before going in. It's good to be back. Look in glove box. The glove box is closed, but appears to be unlocked. Open glove box. Inside is a key and a handwritten note from Dad. You take both. Read. Note. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, found something in the attic for you. It's up in your room. Enjoy. Look at key. It's the key to the house. Get out of car. You open up the car and step out. The house is grand, sat perfectly amongst the trees. In front of you is the front door, and the yard stretches around the side of the house. Go to backyard. You take a walk around to the yard. 
The yard has been well maintained. You spent a lot of time here with your family on holiday tricks. Trips. Good memories. Uh, look around. You see a generator on the back wall of the house. Turn on generator. You switch the generator on and it whirs to life. The house is still dark. Go back. You walk back around to the front of the house. Uh, go to door. Uh, unlock door. You insert the key and turn. The door lock clicks open. Open door. You step inside the front door. You enter the house in the hallway. It's uh, dark and you can't see anything. You feel a light switch next to the door, however. Turn on light. You flip the switch on and the lights come on. The hallway is now brightly lit. There's access to the kitchen and living room here, as well as a set up a set of stairs going up. Go to living room. You step inside the living room. A spacious and comfortable living room. You spent a lot of time here playing board games with the family. Warm and inviting. Look around. There is nothing here of interest. Go back. You go back out to the hallway. The hallway is now brightly lit. Go to kitchen. You walk into the kitchen. The kitchen is tidy and well kept. There is a door to a utility room, but otherwise it's just a kitchen. Open door. The utility room door is locked. You have no idea where the key could be. Break down door. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Kick door. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, look around. It's very clean and tidy. Not been used in a while. Go back. You go back out to the hallway. <laughs> Let me in. Uh, go upstairs. You walk upstairs to the landing. The stairwell landing. There is a bathroom and two bedrooms, yours and your sister's. Pictures adorn the walls. Images of happy times. Look at pictures. Family photos and holiday snaps. Our happy family. Go to bathroom. You step inside the bathroom. You are in the bathroom. There's not much to note, but it's all in good order. Uh, look at brief. Sorry, I don't know what you're looking at. Look at self. No. Look at me. Look at mirror. It's your reflection. Looking good. Nice. Uh, wash hands. Poor hygiene. That's not how you spell that. Uh, go back. I'm just revealing to you guys how poorly I spell. <laughs> but that was something I think everyone knew already. Uh, go to sister's room. You walk into your sister's room. Your sister... Did the game freeze on me? Aw, shoot. Never mind, never mind. We got it back. <laughs> Your sister's room is in perfect condition, untouched since the last time you saw her. Posters of her heroes and some of her own attempts at art adorn the walls. A few shelves are crammed full of trophies. Her bed is drowned under a pile of colorful soft toys. A real nostalgia trip. Snoop. Look around. There is also a large wardrobe in the corner of the room. The door is slightly ajar. Open wardrobe. It is empty, apart from a pile of scattered photographs at the bottom. Look at photos. They are all identical. A forest road at night. He put them back. Take photos. They are all identical. A forest road at night. He put them back. Okay. Go back. You step back out into the landing. Go to my room. 
You walk into your old room. Your old bedroom. So many good memories in here. It's been preserved so well. <laughs> they put plastic on everything. That is a weird way to say that. That's a really weird way to say that. I guess if we moved out and they just kept everything the same instead of turning it into a guest room or an office or whatever. On the desk is a gift wrapped box. Look around. It's a standard bedroom, a desk, a wood grain TV, the usual. Look at TV. A good few years old now, but still works like new. Look at desk. Your good old desk. A little dusty, but still very sturdy. Look at box. Large gift wrap present. The tag says your name. Uh, open present. You unwrap the gift excitedly. You can't believe it. Dad has found your old computer. A Futuro 128K plus 2. It's been preserved well in the attic and hopefully still works. Uh, set up computer. You start to plug in various cables and leads. The computer is all set up and ready to go. There is a game here too. Look at game. It's a new horror game called The House Abandoned. Looks ace. Wow. Uh, play the game. You put the cassette in the computer and press play. the driveway at the family holiday home and park the car. It's dark, but it's clearly neglected. You remember being told to check the glove box before going in. You can't stand to be near this place. Look in the glove box. The glove box is closed, but appears to be unlocked. Open glove box. Inside is a key and a handwritten note from Dad. You take both. Look at note. You don't recognize the handwriting. It says, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Leave car. You force the warped door open and fall out. The house looks abandoned. There is a yard to the side. Wood creaks in the wind, and all happy memories are gone from this place. There is no love here. Look around. The lights are off. Windows are broken. There is a front door and a yard. Go to back yard. You step through the debris into the backyard. The grass is overgrown and weeds crawl up the side of the house. It's not a nice place to be. You clutch the note, needing to look around. Look at note. The note now reads, uh, gibberish. Look around. There's an old generator next to you. Turn on generator. <laughs> there isn't much fuel, but the generator starts up. Uh, go back. You go back to the front of the house. The house looks abandoned. There's a yard to the side, wood creaks in the wind. Unlock, un unlock door. You unlock the door. The click of the lock hurts to hear. Go in inside. You reluctantly step inside the front door. Pitch black, but your senses are punished more by the smell. Stale air and damp. This could not be less inviting. The note burns in your hands. You feel compelled to read it over and over. Read note. 
It's too dark to read, but it feels weird to the touch. Turn on light. Afraid of what you might see, you flick the light switch. The lights flicker on and off. The walls are falling apart after years of neglect or worse. There are stains and trails all over the carpet. In this Upstairs, the sound of an alarm clock blaring. Someone else in this house. That can't be. Turn off alarm. Somehow the alarm stops. You can feel the panic set in. You are still in the hallway. The noise has stopped, but you feel a presence. Someone is in the house. He should not be here. There's a kitchen and a living room adjacent, and stairs leading up. The note feels disgusting in your hands. Read. Note. You can't read the note. It's bleeding. Go to the living room. You enter the living room. The living room, although hardly an appropriate term. The furniture is threadbare and worn. You know it is fixed in your mind. Dread fills the pit of your stomach. This is not a nice place. Read note. The note, always changing, now reads, Get through this. I don't care if you want to or not. You return to the hallway. Go to the kitchen. You go into the kitchen. The kitchen stinks and feels completely unfamiliar. The tabletops are rusted metal, and there is a carcass on the table. There is writing on the wall, and the utility room door has a red X painted on it. Look at carcass. You look closer, but can't tell what it is or what it was. Look at door. There is a red X on the door. You assume it's paint. Yeah, must be paint. It feels like the note. Read note. The paper now feels like fabric. It's covered in blood. You can just make out the words, There is nothing for you here. Look at writing on wall. In blood, the number 1986 is smeared across the wall. Step back to the hallway. Your shoes are wet. You are still in the hallway. Go upstairs. You head up the stairs. They creak. Same but different. The landing across to your sister's sister's room. Behind the door, a phone starts to ring. You don't understand. Neither can he. Answer. Phone. You hear him whisper. Your mind hurts and you taste iron. Voices spill out of the phone into the room. Whoever is in there should not be there. You need to hang up the phone. I do. Whoever. You consider the worst. Hang up. Relief. Same but different. The landing has crossed your sister's sister's room, your room, and the bathroom. Pictures are all over the wall, but something is different about them. Look at pictures. The pictures of your family. The eyes have been scored out on all. Read. Note. The note is now clean again, simply reading, get in, get out. <laughs> Mallow is feeling the horror. She's finally here. In this place, in this feel, the horror feel, the good feel. Uh, go to bathroom. You enter the bathroom. The bathroom feels disgusting. Every surface is covered in a layer of oily grime. The sink is a haven for all kinds of bugs. Uh, lick bugs. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Yeah, all right. Uh, look in mirror. You can't bear to look at yourself. Look around. A broken mirror hangs above the dirty sink. Taps rusted in position. <laughs> Come on now. 
You have to try- it's a game! You have to try every option. It's just like- this is just how you play a text-based adventure game. You try things that sound like maybe they won't work, and then you're surprised when they do. Surprised and gratified that we could lick the bugs. Only good things could have come from that. And the important thing was that we narrowed down our list of available options. What am I doing? Uh, read note. The note is impossible to read due to the black oil that now covers it. <laughs> it might be. Uh, it's certainly a homage to those games. Don't kink shame me, Mallow. Go back. You step back onto the landing. Go to sister's room. That's me! <laughs> now you know, it's my fetish. Jennifer's room is boarded up. You can't bear this. Uh, pry boards. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, break boards? I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> Stop roasting me, come on. Uh, let's see. Go to my room. The door is bolted shut with a four digit combination lock. Look at lock. Sorry, I don't know what you're looking at. Use lock. You grab the lock. The lock is rusted, not used in years. The key in your hand weighs heavy, the note heavier. You grab the lock and can now input the code. 1986. The lock clicks open. Open door. You open the bedroom door. Go to my room. You enter your bedroom. The bedroom feels utterly familiar. The walls are damp. But you've been here before. In front of you, a lone person sits in front of a computer screen. The lamp is on. The clock reads 9999. You shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. You grip the note tight. Read. Note. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Dad. You haunt every step I take, even in this place. It was out of my hands, but you still punish me. I can be with you now. There is nothing left to do. I'm consumed and confused. This has to end now. Say hi. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Greet person. Hello. Hmm. End. You are pathetic. It was all your fault. Say it. It was all my Alt. I don't believe you. Like you mean it. Please. It was all my fault. It was all my fault. Say it. Just say it. It was all my fault. Well, guys, <laughs> it looks like it was all our fault. You feel the spooping? It's okay, Mallow. There's three other parts to this. And they all add up to a coherent narrative. Promise. We're going to episode two, The Lab Conduct. This one's a little bit more involved, visually. <laughs> the 
best of rewards. It may be all of our fault, but now we get to jam out. Three more ways, and this is all our fault. This intro is uh, unskippable, so enjoy! Lovingly rendered old ass machines. Subject 12198623, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander Leading, assisted by Dr. Williams, and in the lab itself, our volunteer, Mr. Asian. We have artifact 23 in the chamber, recovered from crash site B. At the moment, it appears inert, showing no signs of activity. Mr. Asian, instructions for each stage. Uh oh. To your terminal. Never mind. <laughs> and we need you to follow them exactly. Now, some of this may be unfamiliar, so always reference the manual on your terminal for guides on calibration and procedure. Once you've calibrated equipment to match our brief, the green light will flash, allowing you to trigger the experiment. One last thing ensure that any equipment non essential to the current experiment is switched off. You cannot proceed until your calibration matches ours. When you're ready, let's bring this back. All right. Subject J1986 MEM is enclosed in outer layers. X ray the artifact to determine its internal structure. We're going to run an X ray. To do an X ray, we need to use the camera, monitor to set to X ray, and change charge it. Charge it. All right. Monitor. And charging the x-ray. And x-raying now. Okay, good work. The x-ray is coming through now. There's no visible damage to the surrounding organic material. And no signs of activity either. All output is flatlined. Okay, let's begin. Nice. Experiment 2. Surface reaction attempt. Demonstrate the effects of laser light on the object. Try using a low-powered red laser to begin with. Manual. Laser. We need the laser generator. We need to set the monitor to RGB. And the frequency for red is 650. Okay. RGB. Turn off the x-ray. X-ray's already off, it looks like. So which one of you is the laser? Six, five, zero. All right. Applying the laser. No reaction from first stage. Let's try a high frequency. Nice. 2B. Let's see. We're going to use the green laser. Green laser is 510. 510. Ready to laser. Nice. 
Hmm. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. Demonstrate the effects of laser light. Blue laser. Blue is four five five. Four five five. Laser charge. Lasering. Hmm. Well, would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. There's no activity registering in the core. It's possibly damaged. Let's push further. Experiment three, resonant frequency. Test the acoustic resonance properties of the object. Begin with generating a 250 hertz sine wave with amplifier, amplifier set to one. Okay, 250 hertz, amplifier set to one. Acoustic, we're gonna need the generator, amplifier, sine is the wiggly one. All right. Turn off lasers. Sign on. Increasing the hertz. I've already forgotten what number it was supposed to be. 250. Oh, bye, Mallow. Sorry. I was very busy uh, calibrating lasers and didn't notice you leave. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, amplifier. Set to one. And we are now vibrating the artifact. Hmm. Not much of a response. Uh, updating the experiment now. More juice. We need more juice. 500 hertz. Amplifier, 5. Increasing hertz. Fluctuations and activity should be increased through the risk of damage. What about uh, the volunteer? Okay, we're going to push further. I'm running out of time. Let's switch around. We're going to switch to a square wave. I'm assuming the square wave is the one that's square. Yeah. <laughs> Vibrating the artifact. Seeing good activity on this side. Seeing definite spikes in movement. I know this might seem uncomfortable or dangerous. But you need to trust us. Do you trust him, chat? I trust him. I feel nothing but trust. 1000 hertz. You can trust a man of science delivering, uh, Instructions through a radio and a safe distance away from whatever the hell this is. Uh, uh, exactly 1,000.
Oh. Productivity registering. We did it. Can you hear us? You've made it excellent progress. You're doing great. Now we need you to stay calm and try to relax as we go through these next steps. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. The protective casing is off. Proceed to drill the surface. Manual. Drill. First we have to switch it on. Ensure all the other equipment is off except the camera and television. And then we trigger the drill. That's simple. Uh, off. Off. On. Starting the drill. under control. Take a few moments, and when you're ready, we'll continue. Experiment complete! Experiment number five. Contact. Make contact with the artifact. Open the test chamber. Uh, manual. <laughs> Safety instructions. <laughs> As per your agreement, follow all instructions exactly. Make sure your next of kin is updated at Human Resources. It is extremely dangerous to handle any items within the container. Um. Hmm. Well, Bra says just go for it. Just open this on up. Okay. Well, I don't trust the voice, I do trust Bras. This is fine. Now. You have a connection to the entity's inner core. This is fine. It's like a conscious black box. It can show you its memories. Look into it. The visions will translate onto the screen to be something that you can understand. That you can play out. Wake up in the cryopod. Struggling against gravity, you force yourself up. Impact into the planet's surface has torn a hole in the ship hull. Poisonous atmosphere spills into your craft. You are in grave danger. Remarkable. You can navigate its memories. Use the computer. Work your way through. You have to get out of here. Exit... Pod? The airlock door is clamped shut. It is controlled remotely. Open... Airlock. 
Look around. The craft is broken beyond repair. There is wreckage all around. An airlock door is locked tight, and the computer terminal adjacent blinks. Use terminal. You tap through the screen, and the airlock door sputters to life, slowly opening with a horrendous noise. The ship powers down to silence, having spent the last of the reserves. Open. Airlock? This organ was taken from what we think was the leader. These memories are different, and not like the others. There's more detail here. Less hazy. Lean in. See what else is high. Squeeze through the damaged airlock and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. You look around to see you are surrounded by mangled metal. Bright lights pour through every gap in the surrounding wreckage. Are we getting all of this? It's describing the moment we found the ship. Mr. Asian, please continue. Look around. Crash site. Smoke bellows from the downed ship. Exterior lights flickering on and off. Wreckage surrounds you. Looking upwards, you see unfamiliar star patterns. Hmm. Move. Most. Move. Wreckage. With every ounce of your remaining strength, you move away enough of the wreckage for you to carefully crawl through. The lights that surround you attack your senses. Look at lights. You squint at the light, trying to shield your visor lens at the same time. It is a circle of artificial lights set up around you to illuminate the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Look at figure. The silhouette is bipedal and bulky. Some sort of mask covers its face. It beckons to you to approach. Approach. Figure. Your heart rate is elevated, but you're doing well. For what it's worth, very few of our test subjects ever make it this far. You should be proud of yourself. Awake. The room is silent only for the quiet hum of equipment and occasional machine beep. Your touch isn't yours. We are all as one. We move together in unison. Look around. We are in a bed in a small and artificially lit room with a single door. There is some sort of writing pinned to the wall. Adjacent is a display monitor with wires that drape around the room and into your chest. They have tortured us. This doesn't happen. We didn't put this entity in quarantine, it expired at a crash. Whose memories are these? When did this happen? Look at writing. Stuck together are a series of flat sheets with symbols across them, some sort of writing. Look at monitor, minotaur, look at mon- look at- look at monitor! The screen did not give anything away, flashing symbols, and what could be numbers and rhythm. Look at wires. A series of wires leave the machine and run across to our chest, attached in different places. We aren't sure if the black fluid is going in or coming out. Collective discomfort. Pull. Them. Out. Pull. The. Wires. Happened. What's that alarm? There's been a disconnection in quarantine lab 15. Find out what's going on. We yank at the wires protruding from our chest. Together, we all scream in pain. This action sets off an alarm, echoing loudly in the adjacent corridor. 
go to door. Leave room. Stop. Specimen 20 has left lab 15. It's on the move. My God. That vision. It's not a memory. It's happening right now. Mr. Asian, I need you to stop what you're doing, please. the door, we find ourselves in an empty room with a device on the table. It looks familiar. They don't know how it works, but this host does. The door closes behind us and a lock clamps shut. We are alone. Together. Use. Device. What is that? We haven't seen that before. What is it doing? It's using the tool we recovered from the crash site. It's in our system. It's Sending something across the network. It's broadcasting. Mr. Asian, please. We deeply regret what we have put you through, but please understand it was for the greater good. We had to know more. Rebelling now could be catastrophic. You don't know what this might do to you in the long run. Uh, I'm so bad at this. You just gotta match the symbols, but... My visual memory is pretty poor, so... again. There we go. They're all free. They're converging. It's over. So we joined this, this sphere society, the swell sphere society, and I promise this is connected to the last one. Have you guessed the twist ending yet? There's enough information now to do it if you make some leaps. But we'll save uh, the next two for another time, and for right now. We'll play a little bit of Oregon Trail, that old classic. Here we go. <laughs> Not quite. Good guess though. It's less fun than that. That's your that's your clue. The twist ending is less fun than that. No, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I like how you thought that was a joke. 
<laughs> when, yeah, no, that's exactly what we're doing. All right. Get rid of that test game. Campaign, and we'll do normal. All right, gang. Which of these fine fellows or dudettes do we want to be? One, two, three, or four. If you have a preference. Four? One vote for four? Okay, four it is. <laughs> uh, let's play the intro. Ah, uh, frick. Well then, it looks like I just saved your bacon. I reckon we stand a better chance out there if we stick together. My name is Clements. I used to be a priest. Not much use for those nowadays. What's your name, partner? My name is Camly. Alright, frenzies. Now's the time. Shenu? Cross. Uno? Madlo? And Shach? Is that Shach was here for a bit. So <laughs> Okay. Srama. Now see now we're doomed. <sighs> All right. There's a good chance that they still- if they're still alive, they will be up at the shelter set up in DC. If they have any sense, that is. We're going to need a way to get around. I saw an old station wagon a few blocks back. Those things might not be very reliable, but you'd be surprised how roomy they are. Anyway, let's get moving. So if you played the original Oregon Trail, it's just- it's exactly that, but if the zombies- Alright, I think I've got just enough fuel and food for us to make it to DC in this baby. Oops. Aw, shucks. I've never played Death Road to Canada, but it sounds like I'd want to play something called Death Road to Canada, so tell me about that a little bit. Just as the station wagon runs out of fuel, you coast into the city. You can hear a radio blaring in a nearby window. Repeat, all survivors who still remain in Washington, D.C., the government has declared a Class 3 biohazard in the area. They will be commencing a nuclear strike within a few short hours. Get out while you can. The city is lost. <laughs> Resident case. <-R. laughs> Looks like we have a time problem. I'll go look for your friends on the shelter. Meanwhile, you should go scouting for supplies. I've heard about a place on the west coast that is supposed to be a safe haven from all the chaos. Let's meet back here and head out. Here, take my journal. I've written down everything I know about surviving on the road. It should help you decide what you think we may need on the trip. All right. So it's a resource management game. Hmm. 
I was hoping if we had enough money, we could buy tires, mufflers, and batteries as needed. Okay. Here's the friends! Look at us friends. Great, everyone's here. There's just one more thing back there on the road. One of those things bit me. I'm already not feeling too well, and I can't stand the thought of becoming one of them. You're gonna have to put me down. Why don't you just keep my journal? It may help you out there. Good luck. <gasps> Clements! Ugh. Jamley put down Clements. Tweet! <laughs> Hashtag sorrow. Hashtag grip. Hashtag zombies. Hashtag Clements. 276 miles to Pittsburgh. Great. You get caught in the blizzard and the cold will tax our health and we'll have to drive more cautiously. So now we're slow and hurting. <sighs> Thanks, game. Oh, frick frack. Already? This thing is a piece of crap. <sighs> we can ki you can kill your party members at any time. <laughs> if you feel like it. If you feel like maybe you're using food up too fast. Oh. We don't have any batteries. Scavenge? Oh, come on. <sighs> well, the blizzard's over. <laughs> Check engine light is on. this weather. It's the apocalypse in more than one way. <laughs> you wait an hour while Janu vomits in the bushes. <laughs> Can you vomit in the car? Couldn't we have gotten him a bucket? That's dangerous. I wouldn't have let you out of the car.
Nice. to Canada sounds maybe better than this actually Get any gas, but we don't really need any gas. Sweet. Janu, no! Aw, oh, damn it. Hold on. Don't I have med kits? There you go, buddy. No, oh, damn it. Okay. You're the last one. Yo. <laughs> Pittsburgh. We're gonna see if we can buy some stuff. Scrap. Food. We have plenty of money. food oh we're good maybe we should try hmm and a med kit oh we're one dollar short on med kits I guess we'll just buy a fuel. Nice. Good jobs. No. No. How's everyone doing? Everyone's a little bit worn down. Otherwise, okay. Talk to stranger. You encounter no one. Leave. <laughs> Come protect me for it. It's a deal. It's a steal. Once you leave town, you won't be able to return. You must cross a horde of zombies in order to continue on the road. The horde in front of you is currently large in size and appears to be alert. Hoo-ha. Ah, hoo ah. Time for the moral choices. Wait to see if the horde disperses. Break out guns, clear path, attempt to sneak through. Let's, uh, get, be informed. You can sneak. If the zombies aren't very aggressive looking, you might be able to slowly drive through them without drawing their attention. Fight your way through. I think we're going to wait.
okay. Zombies, man. Our station wagon. What? How do we let that happen? What an asshole. Went missing. That's fair play. Nice. The mall. Left to die. Apaco. I was lucky to get out alive, but I dropped something precious to me in a horde of zombies. Difficulty? Suicide, but $18. Hmm. No scraps. Mm. I wish I could sell that battery. Did you know that if you stop to rest, you can usually overcome any sickness? Resting in a city usually means you heal up a little faster. The station wagon- the station wagon is about to kick it. You aren't sure which way to go. You lose an hour bickering with Mallow. Thanks. people who are really not very competent when it comes to navigating so I can see me are you sure it wouldn't be an argument so much as I just keep asking over and over again if she's sure that we're going the correct way food we didn't find any freaking scrap And die. <laughs> oh well. At least the blizzard stopped. Bross, you have cholera.
Yeah. No, I don't want to sell my damn med kits. And only med, med kits for sale. There's a gang of bandits who've been terrorizing our little settlement to get rid of them. For four med kits? Man, I'll take that risk. then <laughs> that was short-lived we need money I'm so bad at remembering numbers. How much did that cost? 34. Bye, jerks. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe we should... Maybe we should stop and rest for four hours. See if you don't recover, Bross. Not exactly, but you are looking a little bit better. Time to go. Janu has a fever, but Bross is cured of cholera. Nice. You aren't sure which way to go? You lose an hour bickering with Srana. Nice. Uh, our tire popped. Loop doop. Let's see. One child was eaten by my husband when we had just started off for safe haven. Now I travel alone with my five children. The eldest, Caleb, is 11. I fear he'll be the man of the family before he hits puberty. We gonna start starving. We're gonna scavenge for food real quick. Ooh, that was a car part. Nice. Almost made up for what we lost. And we have some scrap, so that's pretty excellent. Yeah, I think it's daytime, but how many zombies there are? I think it's random. Srana sits too hard on 46 ammo 
and ruins it. <laughs> wrecked. You freaking destroyed it. 46. 46? 46? <laughs> 46? How much ammo do I have? Janu, there's no fever anymore. Ah! We made it to the farm. Oh, we still have plenty of ammo. I don't know what I was freaking out about. See if we can't boy something. All right. Jobs. I dropped something of great value to me for a tire. A crate fell out the back of our car. Can you go find it? Oh, good catch. Let's do it. Up. I think that the symbols on the screen have very much correlation with what you pick up. No, what? I don't know what this is. But Okay. <laughs> I've never done this mini game before. <laughs> Pretty bad. Okay. We done. A bike gang follows us out of the settlement. the scrap we'll get at the end of this. Vroom, Doodaloo. 192 miles to Chicago. Nice.
something is burning. The world's, you know, a little bit of zombie, a little bit of Mad Max. It's ash and fog. I think we're just gonna wait this out. I can't believe no one's died yet. I hope I didn't sound disappointed just now. I'm happy everyone's alive. I'm just surprised. I kept telling my boy not to stick his elbow out the window. Well, he learned his lesson when we had to put down his buddy for doing the same thing. She got bit by a roamer. Nice. Deadly zombies today. Oh, now you put it like that. <laughs> Chicago. There's a gang of bandits who've been terrorizing. Nope. No more bandits for me. doing okay on food. Alright, this time for sure. An hour of rest, and then back on the road. And 235 miles to the remote shack. Huh. See an explosion in the distance. The sky clears up. Srana is dicking with three fuel and accidentally ruins it. <laughs> it's like it knows. It's like it knows. I've never heard anyone say dicking with. I've heard dicking around with. I've never heard anyone say, I've, I'm dicking with something, to mean messing. Let's rubberneck. You wander into an abandoned hospital building. Oh, what? I said I wanted to have a peek, not wander into an abandoned hospital building during the zombie apocalypse. Evidence of the zombie outbreaks around you. Corpses fill the body bags, piled high atop the makeshift beds. The empty ones make you the most nervous. The place has been turned over. It doesn't look like the scavengers before you have missed any useful supplies. Just as you feel ready to leave, the sad scene. A cry echoes from down the hall. Well, vote. Are we investigating further or are we getting the hell out of Dodge? Leave? That's one vote for leave. <laughs> All right. Unable to handle the situation, you turn and walk away. Sometimes it's just too much. You found $22, hey! Excellent. Zombie activity is low. The remote shack. <laughs> Do -do -do.
Hail to the king, baby. <laughs> is Evil Dead a zombie movie? Evil Dead's not a zombie movie. Is it? Not strictly speaking anyway, right? There's like deadites. I don't know. I don't think it's zombies. I don't think you could call it zombies. Yeah. Scavenging time. No. What? Aw, oh, frick. I accidentally clicked a different game. Clicked out of it. That was the scariest thing that's happened all stream. <laughs> Oops. I know, right? That's a good deal. Now we have one of every kind of car problem. No, I mean one very kind of thing to fix a problem with a car. That's the order of those words. on me. <laughs> you fall asleep at the wheel and crash into a parked car. The station wagon has broken down. Repair it with scrap. Wow. Thanks, jerks. again. Ding dong. Alright, we're getting out of here. We're running kind of low on food. It should be fine for now. See the grave of some poor soul buried at the side of the road. Will we stop to look? Yeah. Fear, hate, sloth, apathy, guns, ammo, sex. You discover floor fuel near the grave. So if that was weird to you, it's 
sometimes other people's uh, deaths show up as graves in other people's playthroughs. You see the remains of another party before you. Yeah, let's gander. Walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward. Tilled, Michael. <gasps> like so. Srana has cholera. Srana can deal with it. What the heck? It usually doesn't happen, so we'll back to back, but... Here lies Keith Savage, lived fast, died faster. Gasp. Maybe so. St. Louis, looking good. No, I think... Here is a good place to stop for the day. How the heck do you do that? Okay, first we'll see what they have to see. Cross a horde of zombies in order to continue the road. Okie dokie. A massive agitated swarm. We don't have any money. Oh, we're really low on food. I may have fricked us. No. <laughs> Maybe? look it up real quick how do you save in Oregon Trail help me out you press the pause button in the upper left I guess that makes sense. Alrighty then. I hope everyone had a spooktacular time. That's it for today. Yeah, we survived the first couple days. Let's see about surviving the rest of them. I'll try to do another stream or two for Halloween. So we have more spooks. Yeah, no, that was fun. I hope that... I hope that it was a good time. Thank you for stopping by, you guys. <laughs> and next time, we'll play the rest of Stories Untold and probably do more Oregon Trail, see if our, you know, ragtag group of survivors can make it, if they can make it to the promised land. Anyway. Uh, good stream. I never know how to stop these things. I'm just stopping. I'm stopping.